Hi, I'm Kirsty Meekin from Nail Nails. In this video, I'm going to go back to basics. By that, I mean, I'm going to show you how to pick up the perfect bead and also go in depth on how to pick up different size beads and the correct ratio. Keep watching. I'm going to demonstrate with natural beige because I think it's a really good colour. It'll show up great on camera and you'll see everything really well. The density of this and the opaqueness, this will be awesome. I'm going to use high speed. I love high speed. I work quickly. So I'm going to use high speed for this demonstration. And first of all, I'm going to talk about and show you how to pick up a bead. Some people struggle with it, and I'll tell you the different reasons why. Every single person that I have taught from a beginner level pick up the bead wrongly, and they all do the same thing. So everybody makes the same mistakes. So we're going to go into the liquid, and we're going to make sure there's no bubbles in there. So as you press down in the dampened dish, little bubbles will float up, and that means the brush is then soaked with monomer, which is the liquid. I'm going to drag off one side. And then when I go into the powder, I've got about, what angle is that? 45 degrees. 45 degree angle. And we're going to do a little walk through the actual powder. So I'll show you that again. So drag off. So you, as I drag off, this is the wet side, so I turn the brush and place the wet side in and walk it through the powder. Yeah, show you that again. When you pick up the bead, so I'm going to do the same thing, drag it off to my right. If you are left handed, you're going to do it to your left and take it back now, y'all. Take it back now, y'all. One hop, one hop. Take it back now, y'all. One hop this time. One hop this time. That song is so bad. I'm getting off that song in my head now. <laughs> yeah. So I'm dragging off to the right and I'm spinning my brush. And then I'm going to go into the powder. Now, as you walk it through, look at the bead. You can see that it's starting to polymerize. There's a little bit of dry powder there, but that will eventually, that little bit will eventually start to mix with the liquid, especially when you place it down and you touch that with your brush. Now that is a medium to dry bead. Can you see how I can control it and I can make that into a nice little perfect circle? I would use that if I was doing a smile line because I want it to stay where it is. So that's not going to move, it's not going to run anywhere. If you want to do a medium bead, which most people do, you're just going to walk through a little less. You're still going to have the same amount of powder. You can tap off if you want any excess powder, but you won't really need to. So you see as you press into that, it starts to bounce back. It's holding its shape, but you can see it's far more shiny. And I can keep moving that about. And I can keep moving it about for a lot longer than the medium to dry bead. So a medium bead you would use for your structure. When I am saying medium, I don't mean size. I mean that mixture between liquid and powder. So now we're going to do a wet to medium mix. So you're still going to keep the angle the same because we want to pick up a very similar size bead. And we're not going to walk it through as much. And we're going to let that bead get flooded with liquid. And you can see it's a lot more wet. You can get it thinner. You can see that the brush is still putting liquid into that bead. So just by looking at the sides here, you can see the difference between the three. So to get a drier bead, you're going to drag through the powder for longer. 
For a medium bead, you're going to drag through a little less. And then for a wet bead, you're going to drag through even shorter. So you've got those three different distances there and it's practice and you will get used to picking up the correct bead for what you're doing. If you are doing the cuticle area, you want it a little bit wetter because you want it a little bit more transparent and it will also adhere easily to the nail. I want to talk to you about bead size because we call it a bead, some people call it a pearl. It's basically a ball of acrylic that you're picking up. I will call it a bead. So when you pick up a bead, you are trying to get the correct size and the correct wetness or dryness, yes? So you want a bead, say you want a bead that is small. It's all about the angle of the brush. Do not worry about the wetness and all that. Just, we're going to concentrate on the size of beads. So you're still going to prepare your brush in the same way. You're going to make sure there's no bubbles. You're going to fully load that brush. I'm going to drag off, wet side in. Now if you put the brush upright like this and drag through, you will get a small bead. So the brush then was upright. Do you want me to show you that again? Come on then. So you're going to drag and pull it through the powder and you have a small bead. You can also do this technique with a 3D acrylic brush and you'll get even smaller beads for tiny, tiny things. Now for a medium bead, we're going to adjust the angle. So we're gonna go upright to about here and you're gonna walk through the powder. And you will get a medium sized bead. I'll show you that again. And now, so you've got two little, two medium. And we want to get a bigger bead now. Again, the angle's going to come lower down now. So we've gone from here, and we're moving around like a clock. Tick tock, tick so tock, like, tick tock. If it was horizontal, that's a 90 degree angle. Yeah. But you wouldn't do it horizontal. You wouldn't be no, you can there. get, you can get to about here. It's like 80. Yeah. Degrees. Yeah. To get an even bigger bead, you need to get in the pot really well. So I'm going to angle this pot like this, which makes the distance longer and makes me be able to get a decent angle, which is lower. Same again, you're still going to, you know, flood that brush with liquid and drag off. And then you're going to come into the powder really low. Pass that round. So you get a bigger bead. The reason it is bigger is because the brush is making more contact with the powder. Yep. Little contact, little bead. Lots of contact, big bead. Let me show you that again. So you've got your larger beads there. So I'll recap that. Smaller bead is coming in at this angle, straight up. Medium bead, you come into about here, which is what do you say? 15, 20? You say 10 About to 10, 20, 10 20 to 20. Degrees 20 degrees. 20, degrees. Yeah. And then when you do the big beads, you want to make more contact with the brush. So you're going to come sort of between 70 and 80 degrees. So you've gone from here to here to here into the powder. It 
makes more contact if I show you with something that's really flat so you can see the angle. So imagine this is the powder. So straight up, it's just going to touch that part of the brush. Yeah. And you give it that other angle, 20, 25 degrees. It's going to touch sort of like a quarter of the brush. You drop it down to 70, 80 degrees. It's going to touch just over half of the brush. Therefore getting you a bigger bead. Let me show you what lots of people do and not to do. This is what I don't want you to do. Lots of people go into your liquid, la di la di la, la di da, la da, and then go, oh, well, just grab it like that. And can you see how it's thin here and thick there? It's quite difficult to get it off the brush. So people sort of go, end up going like that. The reason it's hard to get off the brush because there isn't a neat border. So when we drag through slowly, can you see the border that you create? That nice, neat bead and it will release from the brush so easy. So that is what lots of people do when they first start out doing nails. I've even seen people doing it who have been doing nails for a good while but they've never been shown any different and they've just developed bad habits. So I then knock those bad habits out of them. <laughs> like this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you make the mistake of doing this, picking, going like this and with the bead and making a mess on your brush, where you eventually get that off. Can you look at the brush now? Oh, there's residue in there. And then some people will go straight back into the liquid and do it again. And then struggle get it off the brush. And then the brush starts to look like this. And they'll go straight back into the liquid. And they'll do it again. And then, can you see the liquid? It's got acrylic mixed all in it. No way on this earth are you ever going to be able to pick up a decent bead with liquid that is contaminated with powder. It will want to attach to the brush because all the particles will go in between all the bristles of the brush and it will not release. You need a nice clean bead. By clean I mean that perfect shape on the end of the brush. It will release from the brush really easily. It's very important to clean the brush between picking up a bead. So let me just get rid of this liquid because it's all nasty. I'm going to clean this out with acetone just on a limp free pad. And I'm going to go clean that dampened dish out. I'm going to use some brush cleaner to just clean anything out of this brush that we've just been messing about with. So I'm going to spin the brush so all the bristles of the brush get saturated with the brush cleaner and then I'm going to wipe and as I wipe I rotate the brush like this. So I wipe and turn the brush in between my fingers to make it a nice pointy brush. Some brushes are pinched, I'll show you a pinch brush. Pinch brush you would clean like this but then you would still spin it a bit, but you wouldn't spin it as much because you still want it to be pinched. By that, I mean like it's crimped here. Rather than this one is round and this one is pinched. On this little tip we've got here, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use all those different things that I've just talked to you about. So like your small beads, the different ratios. And we're going to do this on a nail so you can see how I do it. And I'm also going to talk to you about cleaning of the brush between each bead. So get rid of the bubbles out your brush. And wipe. Walk through, picking up a medium sized bead, cleaning the brush. And then we're going to pat down the back and bring the bulk towards the tip. 
cleaning the brush between. Did you see how it's stuck to the brush then? I had to clean it. And then feather it off at the end. Then I will turn you know, the brush around to just blend that back a bit. So we're going to get another medium sized bead. I'm going to go at the cuticle and I'm going to clean my brush. The bead is polymerizing as I clean the brush and it's falling down the nail because we are tipping the nail down. And then we're going to pull that, pat and press and pull. The three P's, pat, press, pull. Over the top. And there you have it. So when I'm, I'm working with acrylic, I always make sure, and this has become natural, this is a natural thing that happens. I go in, I get the bead, I put it on, I clean, 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 and then I manipulate the bead and start to press, pat and pull the bead into shape. And then I clean the brush again, then pick and go into the liquid and pick up another bead. So I'm making sure that brush is clean all of the time. If it's not, the bead will stick to the brush and you'll create a whole mess for yourself. The brush needs to be clean to get a clean release. Clean brush, nice, clean, tidy bead, and it'll release from the brush easily. Is that because the acrylic sticks to the acrylic? Yeah. Right. So because of the if the the brush has got residue, like I showed you earlier, it had like residue in the in the liquid. If it has that still in the brush, it will just won't stick to itself. So it won't come off the brush. So make sure your brush is nice and clean all of the time through every bead. So just build up a little routine of cleaning. As you clean that bead, so I'll put another bead on here. It's only going to be a little one, but we'll just put it on. I place that on. I clean the bead. I go into the liquid. I clean the brush. And then I pick up another bead if I wanted to. But all that time that I've been messing about with that, I can now work that bead, pat and press it. If you place a bead down straight away and try to move it without cleaning your brush, you flood that bead with acrylic liquid and it'll go wetter and look what happens. Not good. Make sure you clean your brush between each bead. There you are guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give us a thumbs up. I think that was really educational because you know we do fun and education together. All the products we've used today are in the description box below as normal. Don't forget to subscribe, check us out on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye! I'm Kirsty Meekin from Nao Nails and in this video we're gonna go back to basics. I'm going to show you how to pick up the perfect bead, show you how to pick up a small, medium and large bead and I'll show you how to do <laughs> Don't go too in depth I think. Okay, simple yeah. stupid.